I'd like to call this meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to introduce our board. To my far right is Kevin Brubaker. Mm -hmm. To my right is Vice President Greg Alec. I'm Mike Gebhardt. To my left is Jim's Bax. <coughs> to his left is Annie Karstoffen, our Superintendent, Dr. Jama, and our Treasurer, Joy Clickinger. Very good. Do we have any presentations tonight? No, Mr. Okay. Do we have any visitors' comments? No, we did not have anyone no, have to sign up. Okay. Board member discussion items. Do you want to do roll call? Oh, yeah, we might have to do roll call. Yeah, uh, Mr. Gebhardt? Here. Mr. Alec? Here. Mr. Bax? Here. Mr. Brubaker? Here. And Ms. Karstarfin? Here. Thank you, Mr. Alec. Sure. Board member discussions. Anybody have anything? Go ahead. Go ahead. What, what am I talking about here? Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, what are we talking about? The OSBA? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, we just want to touch base here on the uh, OSBA conference that was the last few days. Um, the entire board went, uh, some of the cabinet members went, and I think it was a great time. We got to uh, experience a number of sessions that were very informative and very helpful. And I'm really excited about the uh, public funding for a uh, private for a stadium. So I'm looking forward to uh, hearing from uh, Paul and Syed and uh, talking about the, the new schools and uh, getting rolling on that. Um, some of the other sessions, anything jump out to you guys that you really enjoy that you want to touch on here? Well, I uh, was the delegate to the OSBA 61st Assembly. Um, I don't know if I was roped into it or um, had the privilege of doing it, but nonetheless, there were several hundred districts that did not attend, did not represent their school districts in this, and I, I'm bewildered on why that would even happen, why you would not have a representative there, but there are multiple things that the General Assembly voted on. Uh, most of it was terminology and language changes that was taking place, but the one thing that stuck out to me, and I, I talked to several people afterwards, uh, the delegation voted, and this is a lot of what uh, our district and other districts have already done in regards to the funding for the charter schools and requesting funds back. And I know Mr. and Mrs. Jablonski have been big on this, but one of the things that uh, we voted on said in part, the OSBA supports legislation that grants Ohio public schools at least the same per pupil amount as the charter non-public schools in Ohio receive and they direct any and all funds returned to the state by the charter schools to traditional public schools of residence. In essence, that's basically saying if this, that the state gets any money back from the charter schools, that money should be shifted back to the local public schools that, it, quite frankly, it took uh, away from. So uh, it was nice to be able to sit in, and it obviously was voted on unanimously uh, through the SBA, OSBA legislation, but uh, I thought that was very interesting that even OSBA is on board uh, with what the local public school districts are doing. So it was a privilege to sit in on that delegation. Oh, good. Okay. Annie, you. anything? Uh... Um, the session from the ESSA was, I thought was very interesting. And then also at the Black Caucus um, at the dinner on um, Sunday night, um, the spotlight on the youth, um, actually there were about 15 young men from Shaw High School in oh. East Cleveland and I thought that they did a wonderful job of uh, spotlighting the positivity that the youth are doing. And I, again, I think I stated before that at some point I would like to see our youth go because we have a great group of young people here that are doing some positive things. So hopefully we will be able to spotlight our youth again. And also again, as he stated, the stadium. I thought that was a very interesting um, session as well. Cool. Jim? Um, yeah, as uh, I'm always amazed at the number of acronyms that are used in this, in, uh, within, particularly in, in school board districts, and, and everything seems to have some sort of an acronym tied to it. 
And um, I was happy to learn in, at, the, at the conference um, what EMIS meant. And that is the, what is the Educational Management Information System. And the neat thing about that session was you, I got an appreciation of how important the data in that database is and how important it is that it be exactly accurate, that it be very accurate, maintained, audited. And Greg and I had quite a few discussions on that. Um, but in any event, I was, I was amazed that, you know, you, you think about this information that we collect from all these different places and that one particular item that's left out could possibly affect the funding that, that this school gets or this district gets. And um, so anyway, I, I, I like that procession in particular because uh, I think, you know, we've got certainly with uh, 6,500 students and however many hundreds of pieces of information we have attached to each one, the chances of error, it's, they're certain, we're certain there's errors in this database. And so that's something that uh, I think there's probably some opportunities at that point to, uh, to look at this in terms of some sort of a, and understand what our audit procedures are and uh, what are we doing to, to purify this database and, and validate it. So that was, quite, that was interesting, I, I like that. I think the term that came to me with the EMIS was overwhelming. That was very overwhelming, how much information is in that system, so. And uh, look, it was really nice to be able to talk to uh, Ann Slosh about the information, and she's going to forward some information to the board also, so mm -hmm. get a little background on that. So, mm -hmm. But all in all, I think it was a really uh, good conference, and uh, we really got a lot out of it. So, yeah. uh, Yesterday, Tom and I went to the State House and listened to a number of superintendents talk on the State House steps. There was about... 150 to 200 people there, and it was very interesting. Thought they were talking about the testing, and I uh, think Angie Jablonski and Don McNeely were both there. And I think later, Don actually spoke to the Ohio Department of Education. State school board. School board. So that was that was interesting to listen to that and see the the rally. Good news about that, uh, Mr. President, is they spoke yesterday, a lot of the concerns stemmed around uh, high school graduation right. and the number of credits that our students will need next school year to, uh, to graduate from the tests that are given. And we already got information today, and I don't know if the rally yesterday had anything to do with it or it was a catalyst, but uh, they're already talking about changing the requirements and phasing them in over a period of time rather than uh, just putting it into place. And you heard uh, several people say yesterday that there's districts out there where 50 and 60 percent of their seniors may not graduate oh, wow. with the new uh, wow. requirements. So. Mm. That's good. Anybody else? Nope. Okay. Item F, meeting minutes. May I have a motion to approve the board meeting minutes for the November 16th meeting? So moved. Second. Well, we'll second. Discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. Ellick? Aye. Mr. Bax? Yes. Mr. Brubaker? Aye. Ms. Karstarfin? Aye. And Mr. Gebhardt? Aye. Moving along, Treasurer's actions. Thank you. Um, number one, the monthly financial report. To accept the financial report for the month of October 2016, which includes all bank reconciliations, investment report, cash balance report, and appropriation and expense reports as detailed in enclosure G1. Number two, donations. To acknowledge, express appreciation, and accept the following gifts and donations. Nagel Southside Farm Market has presented a donation of 20 large pumpkins valued at $100 to the students at Ely Elementary. The donation will be used for student activity. Ms. Sue Ackerman, has presented a donation of school supplies and Christmas items valued at $300 to Westwood Middle School. The donation will be used for students in need of school supplies and student Christmas presents. Coats for Kids has presented a donation of winter coats valued at 7,000 
$574. The donation will be used for students in need of coats in the district. The American Legion Post 12 Auxiliary has presented a donation of 61 new coats valued at $3,050. The donation will be used for students in needs of coats in the district. Number three, purchase orders. To approve the attached list of purchase orders in order to comply with the district's purchasing procedures as detailed in enclosure G2. And Mr. President, I submit these recommendations for your consideration. Thank you, Joy. I have a motion to <coughs> approve the items recommended by the treasurer in item G. So moved. Second. No second. Any discussion? I would just like to comment on all of the purchase orders that are listed. Every one of those are from our auxiliary services. So those are the services outside of the district. And if you would like to go through each and one, every one of them individually, but basically they're year-long contracts and the purchase orders weren't <coughs> put in before the first date of service. Thank you. Please call the roll. Oh, wait, I have a question. Um, on the appropriations, you have two, two line items that are over the annual appropriations. Um, what, what are those? And do we need to do additional um, procedures for those amounts that went over the annual budget? Um, it was district agency and then um, the termination benefits. Let me get exactly to that. Yes, we will be doing those. We'll be updating the appropriations next month. Okay, good. Now, please call the question, the roll. Mr. Brubaker? Aye. Mr. Bax? Yes. Ms. Karstarfin? Aye. Mr. Ellick? Aye. And Mr. Gebhardt? Aye. Item H, you don't have anything? No, I don't. Uh, how about item treasurer's report? Uh, I would kind of like to uh, jump on the bandwagon with the OSBA Capital Conference. I want to thank the board for allowing me to go, and it was very informative. I went to things that um, will help, hopefully, with bond issuance and investments. I went to some of the legal seminars, and anyhow, it was, it was a great conference, mm -hmm. and it was good talking to other people that were there also. Good. So thank you. Item J, do we have anything on that? We pass a bond levy? Absolutely, uh, <laughs> Mr. President. Tonight's the first night as a, a team or as a Board of Education and as a school district, we've come together officially. And uh, I just want to say thank you to the City of Elyria and all the voters for passing Issue 23, which is going to uh, bring quite a bit of change to the city itself as well as to the school district. And uh, again, thank you. Also, thank you to the board for all your assistance throughout the last, uh, what, 14, 16 months. Today was an exciting day with reference to the Ohio Schools Facilities Commission and the project. Uh, we met uh, Paul, uh, Paul and I, uh, Joy, and uh, two gentlemen from the Ohio Schools Facilities Commission, Bill Prentissall, and I don't remember the other gentleman's name. Mark? Mark. Mark Burr? Barr. Barr. Mark Barr, we had an opportunity to uh, sit down and discuss the scope of the project and the project itself. Um, but rather than me sitting up here talking about each of those steps tonight, um, since the uh, stadium is going to be separate from the Ohio Schools Facilities Commission, it was a locally funded initiative. And uh, that falls out of the scope of what the Schools Facilities Commission will do. What I'd like to do is have Syed come up here tonight, talk a little bit about the stadium, Syed, and where we're moving and how we're moving forward with that project. And then Paul will come up as well to talk about the timeline and the events that will take place from now, probably through the end of March, in the process of getting the process kicked off. Would it make sense to maybe do the timeline first? <laughs> Well, good evening, board, and congratulations again to you and the community for a job well done. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. It was a privilege. Uh, how exciting. And uh, to see Mr. Prentissall again today, uh, 
was 2007 when we had a meeting similar to the meeting that we had today, and nine years later, we're talking about getting the job done. So it's uh, very, very exciting. He was excited to see us. He has been very helpful to us. And uh, our relationship with the Schools Facility Commission has been excellent. Uh, the, the, um, the phrase that they're here from the state to help us, we make a lot of jokes about that in our business, but these guys, I think, are really here to help us. They are very friendly, they're very helpful, they're straight shooters. We asked them questions, they gave us answers, and uh, they're the kind of team that when they don't know the answers, they get back to us, but it's very rare that they don't know the answer. This gentleman's been with the commission for 16 years. I believe he's a retired, not retired, but he's an architect by trade, isn't he? Yes. And um, he understands. Uh, he helped us with the Washington building. When we didn't know what to do with the basement, we wanted to do something with that. The Facilities Commission didn't think it was uh, suitable for instruction. We found a way to, to make it suitable for instruction, and you have the rest killer down there. And this gentleman that we met with today played a, a, a large role in, in how to get that done. He's a preliminary uh, in the process, a, a person in the preliminary steps. And in the uh, memo that I had sent earlier uh, to you and informal discussions that we've had from time to time, you have now a map in your mind, however general, that uh, we can't uh, go out and, and go to Home Depot today, you know, that commercial, let's do this, and uh, we'll go buy a couple of shovels and some concrete like we would on the weekend when we're going to build a deck. Uh, we're building $140 million worth of... Uh, of school structure and an athletic field. So you have to imagine if somebody's willing to give you $80 million, that there are some processes and procedures in place that they want to have us go through. And we, uh, uh, our discussions early on were, were spot on. The, uh, the Board of Elections will be finalizing uh, all of the tallies and, and notifying the Facilities Commission that uh, we did, in fact, pass with flying colors. There will be a release of funds, but that's not going to be for a while yet, at least from the state. Uh, they, there is a process now where they're going to start right away in drafting a request for qualifications for architect. And they expect that to be done within about a week on their end, and then they're going to send it on to their various departments that have to uh, approve the these statements, and they asked us quite a few questions today that you may have questions about, too, in terms of what's the project going to be like, because in terms of architects and architectural firms that would be considered, it depends on the scope and the magnitude of the job, but not only that, but the timeline. And one of the first questions they asked us is, did you plan on breaking ground in five places all at once? And if they had to post it like that, they would look towards an uh, architectural company that, that was doing uh, five things at once. We responded right away that all, all of our discussions with you and uh, preliminary pre-bond work with uh, AVG was that we would not do that. It would be a phased project, uh, probably two or three schools initially along with the stadium, and then a couple of schools as the other schools came online. Uh, interestingly, uh, Tom was very uh, quick to ask him, uh, okay, we, we understand we have to go through this procedure now of choosing an architect, which won't occur most likely before February 20th for it to be official. And then from there, we will go to a process of, of uh, selecting your construction management company. Uh, we had three choices that, that were discussed, and uh, hopefully we were speaking for you. Uh, from discussions that we've had informally, and that was a general contractor to do the job, kind of like building your house. You hire a person and you, bo you bother them for about three months while they build your house, and you don't know quite who they're bringing in to do your plumbing and whatnot. They're taking care of it. We're too big for that. We decided, they decided they didn't want us to do that. The other one was a design build where the architect and the construction company were kind of the same building. And they likened that to things like, um, oh, drugstores and Taco Bell and places like that, that. That always pretty much looked the same. And you don't need a lot of 
input from a lot of people to determine how to make the building work. Mm -hmm. uh, it is what it is, and they've built 400 of them, so they're going to build 401. Uh, ours would not be the case because everything's going to be customized and tailored based on the needs of each of the schools that are going to be built. And although it's the same district, they'll be uh, a little bit different in, in each way. So the one that uh, we told them that we believe that you would move forward with is the construction management company at risk, or they call that CMR. So you're going to be hearing those initials CMR right along. They should come on board somewhere in March, and they would like the interviews to be March 27th, the week of March 27th, 2017. And your interviews uh, for the architectural company will be the week of February 20th. The architect chosen will be included with the selection, in the selection of the construction management company. Uh, the, Basically, uh, after that, you can, uh, in terms of the co-funded, that would follow a, a set of, of procedures that are in place. There's, uh, and you'll see that in the notes, too, that I sent you, that there are a series of meetings that will be held uh, prior to the uh, program of requirements, and you'll be hearing POR as we go along, and uh, the POR is the ability of the people that are going to work in the building and the community that will be served in a particular building, the students, staff, administration, board of education, building by building, uh, how are you going to teach, how are you going to work? How, how, do you, how are you going to get your work done? And then the architect will design around that discussion and come back in various phases. I believe there's three phases, say it. Four, 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 four phases all, all together. A series of uh, uh, schematics are one of the earliest ones, and then eventually construction uh, where they can actually work from documents. Uh, that process from now till then is about 14 months. You'll probably sell your bonds. Uh, Joy was talking to Mr. Bacco, and you all know Mr. Bacco. Uh, he was talking about February? February, March. In there. She's, she's on that schedule, and uh, we're very hopeful. <clears throat> we don't want to make any promises, but uh, in the news today, again, uh, bonds are not high uh, in terms of the interest rate. We advertised 4.5%. We're hoping we can do better. We didn't want to advertise that we could do better during the bond issue because the last thing we wanted was to tell our constituency that we could sell these bonds at 4%, and uh, that obviously means the money that we'd pay each month would be lower on their tax bill. So uh, uh, Mr. Bacco believes that it's still a, a good market for us. And as we get nearer to February and March, we're already halfway through November, we have reason to believe that perhaps we can beat the 4.5%. What that means to the public is lower dollars. The lower the interest rate on the bond, the less they pay. And I don't think anyone would be upset if we were a little high in our estimates. However, they might have been upset if we were low in our estimates. So that is on schedule for February, March. Uh, architects selected uh, from uh, however many applicants we get. They're anticipating 12 to 16 uh, companies, which you will have to rate. Uh, we'll have to find a process. They will, will turn in two uh, sheets and the uh, rating sheets that have all of the uh, companies that applied on a numerical scale. They're going to give us a rubric on how to do that as well. Same thing for the construction company. So that should be done by the end of February, construction company by the end of March. That's the co-funded procedure. Then the architect will go into the schools along uh, with some work uh, uh, with the construction company to listen to staff, to listen to the, the community, and uh, decide on how to make those first drawings appear. The drawings come back. You take a look at them. The school takes a look at them. Uh, architects are always very happy to completely redraw things that uh, they've, they've sketched out. Uh, thank God for computers uh, uh, these days, I suppose, to make those changes. But uh, you can't imagine how nice it is. I remember in 2000, late 7, early 8, 
2008, when the renderings of the building on what they were talking about, we didn't have to look at blueprints, which are difficult for people, but a, a rendering that, that looks like you're actually looking in a room mm -hmm. that is built along with students and staff, and you get a sense of how, how it will look as they're going down the hall. From there, they go back and they have to finish and polish that off, and eventually it, it'll be uh, the, the kinds of drawings that they can actually build a building from, and then we'll have the winter probably that'll get in our way, but first chance they could get out and break ground should be in the early spring. Uh, Mr. Prentissel was projecting that it would be March of 2018, and that 17 months later, August of 2019, all things considered and things moving along smoothly, the first phase, which could be three of the five buildings, are completed for the school year 1920, 1920 school year. And that delay there is, is normal. It's a long process. It has to do with getting a lot of input. It has to do with some bureaucracy, some selection processes, and so on. But you don't have that problem with the stadium. And so we want to make it very, very clear to our, our public, especially, that they'll see work that they can see at the stadium before they'll see work at the school sites. Uh, people think that shovels uh, to ground means there's something being done, and if we don't see anything uh, shovels to ground, then we're not working. So it's, it's very important that we get the message out that we're, you're working very hard. It's already begun. The meeting already occurred today. It's only eight days after the election. And they went back to their offices to post the initial forms now for you to um, select the architect. You're going to have to approve uh, another uh, NOCA, uh, Notice of Conditional Approval. And this is not deja vu. You already did it. Uh, you're not just thinking you already did it. But uh, I heard the explanation today, as, uh, as did Tom and, and Joy. I'm not quite clear, again, why we're doing it for the second time. It has something to do with laws, laws. we heard. And it was legal. And lawyers said that it was uh, something they had to do because we're a lapsed district. Now, again, the public may hear the word lapse, and uh, for fear of too much information, I think we should explain, we didn't do anything wrong. We're lapsed because we made a conscious decision back in the 12, 13 uh, school years, somewhere back in that range, when we had an opportunity to go again with the Schools Facility Commission, we said that we were interested, but we made no effort to go for the bond issue because the more we had to work, Back then, we were still closing schools, and we were adjusting ourselves to get right sides because of the decrease in enrollment. We had staff reductions, and we had school closings, and the time wouldn't have been right to start talking about building new schools, because quite frankly, then, we didn't know exactly how many schools we would need. We didn't know how it was going to bottom out in terms of, of the kids leaving, and, and we know that now. So when we were approved for this project this summer, uh, in August, was it, uh, that the clock started? 13 months is what you have to get it passed. Our 13 months went by consciously. So even though we're saying uh, we have to call it lapsed, and they will call it lapsed if you ever saw any paperwork, it just means that we had this window that was open that for one reason or another we couldn't take advantage of it. Some people, some school districts tried to pass their bond issue and failed. Others, like us, decided it was a bad time, but we wanted to keep our place in line. Mm -hmm. That's why it's lapsed. So it's nothing to do with any, anybody that did anything remiss. Uh, you'll have to do that at your uh, December the 14th board meeting. Joy will receive documents from the state that will look very familiar. Uh, they told us they will practically be exact, except for possibly now the timelines, and that you would need to approve that in December, and then it will go to the commission for approval. And again, you're hearing, didn't they already approve us? Yes and no. They gave us a tentative approval. If we could pass the bond issue, this would be their final approval, and that's January the 26th. The controlling board, and that is of interest uh, to anyone that uh, handles the money, they control the funds. 
They'll meet on February the 6th, and uh, there's no reason to believe they're not going to release the funds shortly thereafter. When the contract's in place, actually they won't release the funds. They'll approve the funds, and then uh, we have to have a contract. Right. They release the funds as we need them. Yeah, and, and you'll, be, you'll be seeing a contract from them spelling everything out that we already said we were going to do. Now, what the public could see, and, and I believe will see, if I understand things correctly, is the stadium, uh, m much before that. And so, Syed, you want to talk about the, uh, sure. the state of the, the stadium? <laughs> Paul, can I something? jump in here real quick? Um, before we, we, we talk about the stadium, um, your memo talked about an owner representative. Yes, um, a, a district representative, owner representative. Right. Yes. And um, is this something that we can continue on with you? Do we need a contract? Hopefully you're not enjoying retirement too much that you'll uh, stay involved with this project uh, with us and uh, continue through? Yes, I, I am enjoying retirement. And the idea of part-time is, is very appealing. And this, although uh, has time involved, it's, it's nothing like being a superintendent and the hours that you have to put in and uh, it's a single focus on, on a thing of high interest. It's interesting, the, during our meeting today they brought that up and they said that, uh, that it's not unusual to see a district representative uh, doing the kinds of things that, that keep it flowing, that can uh, take emails, uh, go on the website, look at change orders, look at uh, progress, work with the architect, work with the construction manager, be a liaison to the board, attend meetings, and do all the kinds of things that would tie the superintendent up. And I'd be very happy to do that. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it, it would be amazing to, to actually uh, work on the bond issue to get the money passed and then see the buildings going from the ground up. That would, that would be fun. Is that something we would need uh, formal approval on, or? I think so. Yes. OK. So that's something for the board to consider here? Yes. Mm -hmm. I okay. could submit to you a proposal of the work done and give you some options on hours, how, okay. how much time you yeah, want me to spend on it. Could you do that by the next meeting? Yes. Sure. Great. That'd, OK. That would be great. Thank you. Good evening, board members, Dr. Jarman, Joy, everyone. Um, again, congratulations. Job well done. You guys worked very hard. The community worked very hard to make this thing happen. Uh, this is an uh, exciting time again in the area, you know. Uh, sure. So we are, uh, we feel very fortunate to be part of this uh, whole process we have been. And uh, we thank you for all the opportunity you have given us to work with this great community over here and and we look forward to have um, continue this if, if possible so uh, having said that <clears throat> uh, in, in terms of a stadium uh, as, as we were working uh, this summer uh, towards this uh, this um, project we, we, we knew that there will be things which uh, we have to get it done uh, uh, ahead of schedule, uh, ahead of uh, the bond issue, we started some due diligence work for stadium and some couple of uh, uh, pioneer field site because we were concerned maybe there's some wetlands or all that. So we started that. So we did some surveys, we did uh, soil borings, we did some um, wetland um, evaluation, and pioneer field, everything works worked out pretty good, there's no, but when it came to stadium, uh, on the south side, uh, they found some wetland, small little puddles uh, throughout. Total adds up to 3.07 acres. Um, so when that, that happened, we had to, we, uh, the district hired a consultant, PSI, who, work, who has been working with us to see how we can mitigate that. And we, we are in a process of doing that because that south side where we have trees, we have some that the, those wetland areas and the bigger areas are in the area where we have our stadium planned and things like that. 
So we, uh, as we speak, they, they looked at our application, they came out, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, they confirmed those wetlands, and then they uh, wanted us to submit the application. <coughs> the district has submitted it, they reacted, they said, why don't you go and look for some other site? Mm, 40, <laughs> 40 some, some acres yeah. over here. So, um, and see if you can find some land which is, doesn't have wetlands. So we have gone through all that process. We looked at this map. There is no 40 acres available which is in contiguous in, uh, and, and which is in the city limits of school district, you know, in area city schools. There is 40 acres in Midview. We don't want that. So we have responded to uh, the, we have, we had to do some, some mitigation. We said, okay, before we were trying to get rid of all 3.07 acres, we redesigned some areas in our uh, athletic complex, and we said, okay, we can live with these little small little wetlands and work with it, and that's what we have sent it back to them, uh, to U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and Ohio EPA. Ohio EPA have also asked us to, ask the district to advertise um, in the newspaper, and it's coming out tomorrow, uh, for comment period. So there's a 30-day comment period for public to comment on this project if they have any problems with it, anybody has any issues <coughs> with those wetlands, but that's a normal process they put it. So hopefully, to cut the long story short, hopefully if um, we get this U.S. Army Corps of Engineer comes back and gives us an okay in terms of our uh, application, uh, we can, our, Kevin is already working on the design part of it. We have already, based on that, we'll get all the approvals. We have already started that basic uh, design right now. So if, if things go smooth and everything goes as planned, we think that we should be able to break ground early next, late summer, sometime like that. So, but the first thing we have to do is to take the trees down. If the trees don't come down till Mar from November till March, is the is the tree um, we can cut the trees. Otherwise, the bat uh, bats are in the trees, and we cannot cut the trees till next. August, you know. That's their mating season. Right. So, so that, that season habitat needs to be preserved or that, that's during correct. during that time. particular times of the year, yes. Yes. Time, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what was the total amount of wetland area? Uh, total is 3.07 acres. And how much of that can we preserve? We said we can preserve a little over a half an acre. Little so here, about little, uh, two acres two, is what we're down little, to? A little, uh, little, uh, little over two acres. Little uh, over two acres we have to mitigate. A little over two to mitigate. And, okay. and there was a stream also, uh, an, um, a 90 feet long stream, which goes by our, where the, if you see where that elect electrical service is, you know, mm -hmm. that there's a stream. Previously we were put, showing in our design, we were showing a pipe, cul culvert, mm -hmm. they said, that is gonna affect our stream, so we said, okay, we'll take the pipe out, we'll give you a, a bridge kind of a thing, so it's stream. So we have worked with them to mitigate those issues. Hopefully they will respond to us positively on that. Okay. And in and, 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 and next, um, it, the, we responded to their letter last week. So we should uh, hear from them within a couple of weeks. Do they after Thanksgiving. generally work with you on that? PSI, who does this for their, uh, on a regular basis, they think they sh this should calm them down, you know. That we, we were trying to mitigate the whole thing. Now we're trying to work with them. Okay. So hopefully we should have an approval from them. Mm -hmm. So okay. we're talking 2018, the stadium would be done that and is, in use. That is correct. Mm -hmm. The so, south side of the stadium. So next that would be, would be the, the, the phase one, which phase is one. the football field, yes, right? The, foot, the, soccer, the soccer, the stadium. Or soccer and football. Track. Soccer and football. That's not the... Not the entire not complex the, that we talked that about. That is correct. Okay. But, but we have to we have to design the whole thing uh, because 
all the utilities, the calculations, the things. You don't want to go it twice. You don't want to make. You want to make sure that if you have to have uh, underground pipes and things like that, you have all that figured out uh, earlier so that you are not going through the bill area again. So mm -hmm. the basic master plan will be there for the whole thing, and then um, the south side will be addressed in phase one. Okay. Yes. And then also, too, we obviously um, have a shortfall here that we have to start rolling on in yes. Yes. the fundraising aspect. So um, that's going to be an area we're going to need to get rolling on right away also. Because I believe, what, $8 million? No, it's not We're four million, nine. four million short. Yeah. Right, but I'm we, saying $8 million is included yeah. in the... We uh, haven't tried yet, so we can't vote. say we're no. short. <laughs> 9.1. 9.1? Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we probably need to spend some time by the next meeting, by the next board meeting, to determine uh, how to move forward with that. That, that's a lot of money. That's not a steak fry, spaghetti dinner. Um, <laughs> pancake breakfast. Pancake breakfast kind of thing, uh, though I like them all and I would eat them heartily. Uh, I don't know that it would buy that much. We're talking about major six-figure or above contributions, and those just don't happen. So we probably need to be thinking about a committee that would be responsible for that, similar to what we did with the high school build the dream, yeah. uh, where people had jobs to do and people uh, that needed to be contacted. I mean, I think there's the the usual name that that comes up of a here, it will be unnamed tonight uh, since there's a video rolling and the press may be here. Well, well we we went who, to who a, contribute. a breakout session at the OSBA and we'll forward that information to you. And I think that was a very, very good plan that uh, actually Boardman used to build um, their stadium. They funded 100% of it. Uh, they didn't use any uh, taxpayer dollars, so yeah. private funding for the entire thing. Wow. So. That, that would be great. And I think the NFL uh, has a history of helping. They helped with um, maybe. Midview. I think maybe 250, 300,000. Uh, it's donations like that. Perhaps naming rights of, of companies. You can uh, have a uh, the scoreboard we already have, I believe we're going to reutilize the existing scoreboard that, that came in as a gift that cost us a few dollars. But uh, the press box could be uh, dedicated to, to a contributor, uh, concessions. Uh, there's been talk about selling to get the community involved because um, uh, there's so many sports fans and so many people do come to the stadium on Friday and band is not just athletics, the, the band is huge in this, and they march on the field, sure. uh, that, that there's been some talk about the ability to sell squares, so to speak, on the field, and to have uh, rights on, uh, or the, the credits on plaques that are, are near the field. Uh, but we have to get that in gear. Mm -hmm. I think <clears throat> the board should think about either resurrecting the initial stadium committee or some members from that committee uh, people who are willing to roll up their sleeves, perhaps have some background in fundraising to tap into the resources you just heard about. Well, one uh, of the things that Boardman said was one of their biggest errors was making their main committee too big, and they lost a lot of momentum and yes. a lot of people that didn't do anything. Um, they, they started with a very small committee yes. and then had committees off of that, uh, so the number of subcommittees. They started off with like a 3,000 club, uh, they're Spartans, so they used the 300, 300. club, um, and they went out to the community and, and asked for donors to give $1,000 and uh, got 300 people right off the bat. They were $300,000, and they went out for the big dollars to the big companies. Then they went to the small businesses, and then they did the you know, field squares, bricks, mm -hmm. or right. mm -hmm. what have you. They had a really nice process and were very successful and able to show momentum along the way. And that's something we may want to consider to uh, Absolutely. I think we're practical people. If that's a template, sure. Give it a I think they raised $8 million, So we're way ahead of them already. But, yeah. uh, right. And they aren't finished. Right. But uh, they did raise a lot of money. 
and it was interesting the process they did. Uh, it's time to do that. Okay. Because uh, it, it would be nice to see the stadium sure. continue. Uh, it, it, it wouldn't have to be all at once because the building process is going to take a year and a half. But if we could start collecting some of that money uh, shortly, then architecturally we could do that. And uh, we should probably formalize the relationship with ABG for that project as well because they've already been working in that and mm -hmm. I know he has. You would have your own process to follow with that, right? Yeah. I think well, ABG's been with us for 16 years, right. something like that, way okay. before the high school was built. Right, uh, right. You've been good partners. Thank you. You've been even with Kevin along, it's been good. <laughs> They've done excellent work. No. Are there any questions about next steps? There are other things too long for tonight, the, but things the you press box be talking about. Is Jablonski press box, is that, that too work. long a name to no, put on there? No, it's a long press box. <laughs> okay. So it, it was good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we accept payments. Because <laughs> oh, if we're charged That's what he's talking about with the toilet. <laughs> Paul, I do have one quick question on that. Um, one of the things that is very concerning with this is we talk about 21st century learning in these schools. Um, this is probably the most important thing about this entire bond issue is that we have... 21st um, century learning facilities for the kids. Um, I'm not sure anybody up here is an expert in that area. What do you have a recommendation? I mean, we're going to have to get somebody involved. What, what's going to happen, Greg, is and we spoke about that today. There's actually uh, after the first of the year, when the architect is on board, you and this actually happens through the Ohio Schools Facilities Commission. You contract, and I forget the gentleman's Frank name. Frank Locker. Locker. He will actually come into the community. It's three full days where you'll have between 50 and 60 people from your community, whether it's teachers, uh, staff members, parents, students, board members, sit down. And you will actually sit down, talk about the process of 21st century learning and what you want in your schools. So they will talk about the process, what needs to happen to make it happen, and then the designs of the architect to build actually the building. So that. this is with the community and the educators? Absolutely. Oh, okay. have, you, have you been through that? Yes, we have been through yeah, About 50, 60 people. Yes, three day session. And, and again, that's, that's from the design side of it. Then it's from the educational side, side of it is, is has to come from the district. Absolutely. If that's where your, your thought process as Absolutely. an education, that's where you're going. Obviously, the building has to fit what, what your, your educational philosophy is. But um, so it all comes together okay. in, 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 with that. You know. Good. We, we added uh, $3.6 3. million to our budget mm -hmm. above mm -hmm. and beyond right. the, the Facilities Commission so that we can uh, utilize 21st century learning and teach the kids how they want to learn and, and what we've learned from research. But I think that is, it will probably additionally take the district beyond the, the, the seminar, oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, some correct. kind of a, a leadership charge to, to make it happen in the schools. Because um, I shouldn't tell this story, but I'm going to tell the story. <laughs> uh, when I was working to build the high school, and this is not going to be easy for some people to hear, uh, I thought we were going to be doing a little more 21st century instruction at the time, and I think people liked the way that sounded, and we had the building that could handle that. Right. And we started furnishing the building, and I was talking with Dr. Sutter at the time, and, and he was taking the lead on that, and he worked with the staff, and without the, uh, we learned from this. Uh, and that's why I think I, I, I should tell it, because we learned from this, uh, and I'll call it a mistake. Uh, we, we talked with the staff and, and talked about how to set up the rooms. Yeah. Mm. And many of the rooms were set up with desks that were traditional in rows of six chairs in a row and five rows right. of six. And, and, uh, and some had tables. 
and, and other, other ways to, to deliver the instruction. And, and one thing about high school is that people really know their material, but the way to teach kids is to look at the elementary and see how those rooms are set up. And when you walk into an elementary class, sometimes you can't even see the teacher right away, or you're down the hallway and you can hear a little buzz. And uh, we, we were ready for that uh, then in, in, in 2007 and then in 2010 and 11. Now we have teachers that are implementing some of these, these concepts with furniture that we bought new that are desks that you have to kind of move around and make, put them together to make tables and put them in a semicircle. And uh, uh, I, I think that it's critical. He can design space, but people have to be committed to how, how, how is this going to look? What would it sound like going, going down the hallways? That, uh, what would it look like when you walk into the classroom? How's that going to look when you walk in the classroom? And, and that, that's going to be huge. Because okay. it can look pretty and, 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 and it needs to be ready. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Moving along. Superintendent actions, okay. okay? Yep, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, at this time, I'd like to ask the board's consideration on the following items under superintendent actions. Item number one, to approve the overnight field trip for Elyria High School students to New York, New York on April 19th through the 22nd as detailed in enclosure K-1. Item number two, to approve the payment of stipends as listed below. $28.30 per hour, not to exceed five hours to the following teacher for a professional development Google Classroom workshop. This stipend will be supported by Title IIA grant funds. Holly will be teaching a uh, class to other educators on Google. Item number three, to approve the payment of stipends as listed below. $150 per day, not to exceed 25 days each for assisting with testing during the course of the school year at Elyria High School. This stipend will be supported by the general fund. And as you can see, the uh, individuals on there are former Elyria teachers and uh, counselors. And these individuals will be uh, helping out the testing process because what happens is if, if they're not helping, then the counselors are being pulled out of the classrooms or out of their offices. And that concludes my recommendations for the board's consideration this evening. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the items recommended by the superintendent in item K? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Who, who please call. made the motion, please? Jim. 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 Okay, thank you. Mr. Bax. Got it. Thank you. Sorry. Ready for roll call? Yes. Mr. Bax? Yes. Ms. Karstarfin? Aye. Mr. Brubaker? Aye. Mr. Ellick? Abstain. And Mr. Gebhardt? Aye. Superintendent Other, nothing? Th thank you, Mr. Uh, President. No uh, items under Superintendent Other, but I do have several items under personnel action as recommended by the superintendent for the board's consideration. Item number one, to approve the retirement of the certified staff as detailed below. And I'd like to thank uh, Betty Fisher and Mark Smith for their years of service in the Elyria School District. They will be uh, retiring effective the end of the school year. Wow. Item number two, to approve the resignation of the following certified staff member as detailed below. Ashley Hunt, effective November 5th. Item number three, appointment of certified staff to approve the appointment of the following certified staff members as detailed below. Uh, you'll see that we have Barb Bangham in there. Barb is coming back to do work with the district on an as needed basis as a school psych psychologist. And as you could see, the, uh, the pay is much higher, but again, that is due to her specialized skills and being a psychologist. It just wouldn't happen any other way. Item number four, to approve the athletic supplemental contracts for the following certified staff and non-employees as detailed below. You can see the names under certified staff as well as non-employees of the district for a swim coach and boys and girls basketball at Westwood. Item number five. To approve the following game workers for their athletic service as detailed below. 
Nick Coleman. Item number six, to approve the appointment of the following classified staff members as detailed below. And as you can see, there are several names, and I believe there's one or two of our new hires here tonight who are joining the Pioneer family. And I'll allow Mr. Taylor, once uh, we've completed this, to, uh, to recognize any of the new hires that are here tonight. And with that, Mr. President, that concludes my uh, recommendations under personnel actions. Okay, thank you. I have a motion to approve the personnel items recommended by the superintendent and item M. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? I have a question. Sure. Um, under item number um, subject to the appointment of certified, uh -huh. where it says not to exceed, um, is that 15 days? Is that per month? Well, what is that? Total. total. That would be total, correct, Mr. Taylor? Total. That's total for the year, yes. Total for the year? Okay. Yes. I, I see two more subs on there. Somebody's Absolutely. been busy, huh? Nice. Check the chronicle or something. All right. I think there's been subs on every time we've voted. Good. Great. Good job. We call the question or the roll. Mr. Ellick? Aye. Mr. Brubaker? Aye. Mr. Bax? Yes. Ms. Karstarfin? Aye. And Mr. Gephardt? Aye. Item N. Yep, wait, wait. Mr. President, there are no actions under. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah. oh, Gary? I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. Yes. It's a great pleasure to introduce Art Woods and joining business building operations over at Winter School. Thank you for that clarification. Welcome. Welcome As to the always, Pioneer we family. we give you five minutes to speak. <laughs> <laughs> you still got four and a half minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Welcome. Mr. Uh, President, I don't have any items to report on this evening. Everything has already been uh, presented. Board of Education. Anybody have anything? No. We have to do the policies and regulations mm -hmm. tonight? Just to approve the first reading. First reading. Okay. Joy, would you? How do you want to put this? Just to, just first reading the. To approve the first reading of the. the following policies and regulations. Right. Administration of federal grants, non-discrimination, non-discrimination on the basis of sexual, sexual, sex, sexual harassment, district website, school admission, admission of homeless students, admission of homeless students, hazing and bullying, hazing and bullying, in, <coughs> integrations and searches to immunizations immunization and student records. <laughs> May I have a motion to approve the first reading? What's that? Motion. <laughs> Couldn't hear you. We have a second. I'll second. Any discussion? Please call. Roll. Ms. Karstarfin? Aye. Mr. Bax? Yes. Mr. Brubaker? Aye. Mr. Ellick? Aye. And Mr. Gebhardt? Aye. May I have a request for an executive session to consider confidential information related to the specific business strategies of an applicant for economic development assistance and negotiations with other political subdivisions respecting a request for the economic development assistance as authorized under Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22. We have two different things here. I think we should do them separate. Okay. You mean go go in and come back out? No. Okay. I read this one. Right. And read the other and, one. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'll make the motion to <laughs> adjourn to executive session on the first item listed. There's a second. <clears throat> I will second. Any discussion? Was, it, was that with action to follow or? With no action to follow okay. on this one. 
Ms. Coble? Mr. Brubaker? Aye. Mr. Back? Yes. Ms. Karstarfin? Aye. Mr. Ellick? Aye. And Mr. Gebhardt? Aye. And we need a second one to request an executive session for the purpose of considering the employment, appointment, or compensation of a public employee or official with no action to follow as authorized under Ohio Revised Code Section 121.22. So moved. Second. Need discussion. Call the roll. Ms. Karstarfin? Aye. Mr. Ellick? Aye. Mr. Bax? Yes. Mr. Brubaker? Aye. And Mr. Gebhardt? Aye. Move into executive session. Thank you all for Thank coming. You.